Hello, welcome. We are building on what we know about geometric sequences, an arrangement of numbers where we're multiplying between each of those numbers, that's a common ratio, and now we're building on that with a series. A series is when you add up the numbers in a sequence. So for a geometric series, we can say that the partial sum, so the sum of some amount of terms in that sequence is equivalent to a minus a times r to the n over 1 minus r, where a is your starting value, n is the step number you're adding up to, right, partial sum up to, this is called a partial sum, this is a partial sum up to the nth step, partial sum, and that's divided by the difference of 1 and the common ratio. Typically I see this factored out where a is factored out, so a times 1 minus r to the n over 1 minus r, which is the same thing as a times 1 minus um, r to the n over 1 minus r. So you can put the a in the front there because when you multiply it, it would end up in the numerator anyway. Okay, so this is the formula. Let's prove that this happens. How can we prove it? Well, the partial sum of any geometric sequence would start off with a, the first term, and then add a times r, a times r squared, and so on and so forth, all the way up to a R, times r to the n minus 1 power. The, one of the really fascinating things here is to focus on the common ratio, something you can work with. What would happen if we multiply this whole thing by r? So we multiply our partial sum by r. And this n should be a subscript. Let me fix that. Okay. So this would give us what? a this is the first term, then ar, ar squared. We're multiplying all of them by r. So instead of a, we now have ar. And I'm shifting it down here to line things up nicely. And then instead of ar, that's being multiplied by r, so ar squared. And then ar cubed, all the way up to, um, there will be, uh, b before this term, by the way, is a times r to the n minus two, two steps before the last step, and so on and so forth. So. If we think about what we're going to get there, I'm going to write this down, then I'll erase it. If you had a r n minus 2, one step before this, times r, well, r to the first times r to the n minus 2, you add these exponents, 1 plus n minus 2. So 1 plus n minus 2 equals what? Well, 1 minus 2 is minus 1, n minus 1. So that's our exponent. There's going to be some term here that's a times r to the n minus 1, right? And then when we finish, though, we're taking this times r. And I'll erase this junk in a moment down here, my little side notes. But a times r to the n minus 1 times r, we add these exponents. And n minus 1 plus 1, n minus 1 plus 1 is just n. So this is a times r to the n. So when we multiply our partial sum by r, we're not going to end at the n minus 1 power, we're just ending at the nth power. So well, how does this help us? How does this get us to this formula here? Well, we subtract. In the um, arithmetic sequence proof of a partial sum, we would add them, and here we're subtracting. What do we get? Partial sum minus r times the partial sum. That's a little sloppy, let me fix that equals, now I love this part, a minus zero is a, but these cancel out. These cancel out. There's going to be an ar cubed minus ar cubed. Those will cancel. These cancel out. And the only thing left over is a times r to the n. And this is going to be zero minus a times r to the n, which is minus a times r to the n. What are we trying to find? We're trying to find the partial sum. So I'm going to factor that at term out. 1 minus r, right? S times 1 is s, minus r times s is rs. So I'm just factoring that out. And then to solve for the partial sum, what do I do? I get it all by itself. Well, I divide both sides by 1 minus r. Get it all by itself. And that means the partial sum of a geometric sequence equals a minus a times r to the n over 1 minus r. And if you factor a out, again, you get the other form 1 minus r to the n, isn't that cool, over 1 minus r. So this is um, generally how we get this formula. And again, you can put that a value in the front. It won't matter. 
how you write that. I see you might see different versions there. I'm going to put this in parentheses though so we don't confuse it. And look at the same thing. So this helps us because if you're given, let's say an example here, some geometric sequence, three, three halves, three fourths, and so on and so forth, you would identify that the starting value is three. The common ratio, say three halves divided by three. What's that? Well, that's uh, three over six, which is one half. Once you have that information, I can say that the partial sum up to any value, um, let's just do the third term here to keep it simple, because you're just literally adding these three things. Yes, you could add them up, but the formula checks out. In any of these versions here, they'll all get the same thing. Let's try them all. The first one, a minus a times r to the n. So three minus three times one half to the third over one minus one half. What does that get us? Well, one half to the third is one eighth. So this is three minus three times an eighth, three eighths over one minus a half is a half. Okay, three is really the same thing. I'll erase that to get the common denominator is 24 over eight. Go 24 over 8 minus 3 over 8 is 21 over 8. Divided by 1 half means times 2 over 1. So this is that reduces to 21 over 4, which is 5.25. That's exactly what we get when we add these three things. And that's in this form. But as I promised, I want to show all three. You can see how they all end up being equivalent. In the second form here, we have, I'm going to actually write it up here so you can see it right with this. So a is 3 times 1 minus 1 half to the third over 1 minus a half. Okay, so on the bottom we're still getting a half. Up top, this is 1 minus 1 eighth. So that's 8 over 8 minus 1 over 8, which is 7 over 8 times 3, which is 21 over 8. And that's going to give us 42 over 8, which is also 5.25. Last one. Let's say I put 3 out front. It's the same thing, really. I'm just going to erase this. I think it's important to see them all so there's no confusion about, wow, where do I put that number? If I put the first term here in the front, I'm going to get the same thing. I'm now modeling this one right here because I get 1 minus 1 eighth over 1 minus a half. Let's erase this. So we're going to get 3 times 1 minus 1 eighth is 7 eighths over 1 minus a half, which is a half. 7 eighths over a half is 14 over 8. All right, just multiply that 2 by that 7. And then look at that pi right there, 3, 1, 4. Very cool. 3 times 4, uh, 14, is 42. Over 8 is still the same thing as 5.25. So you can see that, you know, I'm going to undo some of these things right here. You know, we're getting that 42 over here as well, over 8. The, it doesn't matter which form we take this on with or use, we're going to get the same result. What, what are some other problems you might see? Uh, well, we could be given maybe a series to begin with as in summation form. So we're starting at our index is 1, and we're going to 4. And let's say we have 5 times negative 2 thirds to the k. And you would be tasked with finding out what this is. Right? What is this sum right here? And we're going to try to use our formula in a moment. But take, take a moment, try this out. Expand this, right? You know, plug in the k values, see what you get. And then uh, we'll apply the formula together. So here if we apply k equals 1 and plug it in, it means we do 5 times negative 2 thirds to the first plus 5 times negative 2 thirds to the second. Right, we're just plugging in k values from 1 through 4, and we're adding them all up. That's what this symbol means. Then we add 5 times negative 2 thirds to the 3, plus 5 times negative 2 thirds to the 4. Now, this is what we're trying to find. And it wouldn't be so bad to do this by hand, but you can imagine, you know, if this stopped at 100, you would not want to do it by hand, and the shortcuts we're about to use would become critical. So we're going to keep the example small so you can check. But remember, this applies to any series we would be dealing with. Now, what is the A value? Well, this, in this sequence, a series right here, is the A value. It's the first term. And 5 times negative 2 over 3 is negative 10 over 3. And that's where we start. 
Now what's our common ratio r? Well, we divide these two terms. So this is negative 2 thirds squared, so it's 4 ninths, square the top and bottom, times 4. So I'm going to take the value of the second term, divide by the first term. And that's 5 times 4, 20 over 9, over 10, negative 10 over 3. And that means our common ratio is going to be uh, negative 60 over 90, which is negative 2 thirds. So that means that the in as an explicit formula here, this geometric sequence, if we were producing a sequence, not a series, a series is where you add them up, would just be negative 10 thirds times our negative 2 thirds are our value to the n minus 1 power. So this is what we're dealing with here. And you can manipulate this to represent this as well if you want to mess around with it a little bit. But here you can see what we're dealing with. So if we're looking at the partial sum up to, well, in this case, the fourth term, and this, this notation ends up meaning the same thing as this sigma notation because they both start at 1, whereas sigma, sigma really could start at any index or k value. It's implied that with this partial sum we start at 1, but I'm going to write this only because it's faster. And what this tells me to do, let's go write our formula down again, is we'll do it in this form, a times 1 minus r to the n over 1 minus r. It's going to tell, it's telling me that you take negative 10 over 3 times 1 minus r, so negative 2 thirds to the fourth. This number and this number are going to be matching, right, n and n matching, over 1 minus negative 2 thirds. That's kind of a mess. And my claim, as I said before, is that you could write it like this as well and get the same thing. Put that negative 10 thirds in the front and then multiply it by 1. This is 1 plus 2 thirds. And then this is 1 minus, this is going to be here, 1 minus negative 2 to the 4th is 16 and 3 to the 4th is 81, so 16 over 81. So I'm claiming, and we'll see if I'm right, so it's harder to see in this example that this is the same as this right here, and you, and and you might say, okay, yeah, of course they are, but we're gonna we're gonna prove it because this looks so different, doesn't it? I would say a quick argument is that um, negative ten. This is you could think of this as negative ten thirds over one times 1 minus 16 over 81 over 1 plus 2 thirds, like that. And you can see that this and this are equal to each other, right? So it, it you can say then that they are the same. But let's evaluate both of them so that we're super clear on this. Let's go do the um, top one first, clear off everything. So I have negative 10 over 3 times 1 minus 16 over 81. Okay, that's my numerator. Then I'm dividing that by something. 1 plus 2 thirds. Okay, so parentheses. 1 plus, that's, a, that's not plus. 1 plus 2 over 3. And we get this number here hit math and fraction. So we should get negative 130 over 81. That's what we're getting here. Negative 130 over 81. And then in the other one, let's just confirm that it is the same. So in the numerator, I have 1 minus 16 over 81. Okay. And then I'm dividing that by 1 plus 2 thirds. Boom. Then, so that took care of this. And then now I'm multiplying that result by negative 10 thirds times negative 10 over 3, the excitement. Here we go. Then there's the same number, right, as before. And if I go to math and fraction, boom, negative 130 over 81. So that, I mean, I, I brought that point up because some students asked about it. But regardless, we get the sum here. And you might be like, oh my gosh, this is a lot of work. Why didn't we just go through and add them? I, you know, I think that's correct to say if you were adding these four terms in the sequence, you wouldn't do this whole process down here. 
but this gives us the power to check our work with this discrete example here, these four little terms, and also reminds us that, hey, this could be really applicable as we go into larger series. All right, so in the next video, we're going to look at infinity. Woohoo!